everybody. Good afternoon. This is Jean here. Jean True Love from True Love Quotes for You. I have been sewing in my sewing room and as you can see behind me, I have just finished a quilt top um, that was uh, gifted to me for a promotional um, thing from the fabric hut. This is the third quilt top that I have been asked to make um, to do a, a very, very quick Cliff Notes tutorial on. The quilt top actually took me about 10 hours and I think I, it's going to be about a 20 minute video. I'm um, fast forwarding, but you get it. You get the um, idea. The quilt kit is called the morning glory quilt kit from the fabric hut all of the fabrics that you see here and the bat the um, borders and the backing come with it the only thing that is not included in this quilt kit is the batting obviously you have to purchase the batting um, but this is the backing and this is the quilt kit and again i have the um privilege to call to name somebody who's going to win this entire kit i've done this twice now and the fabric hut has generously gifted this uh this quilt kit so i will be sending i will be selecting in a future video the um, um the united states person who gets to win and then international and the quilt the fabric hut will send that out worldwide um i found it a conflict beginner most of my piecing as you will see was done chain piecing I chain pieced everything the only thing I actually had to pin as an advanced quilter mind you is the rows putting together this is on point meaning it's diagonal I did get a bit confused and I also got confused not because of the directions but because of me I had to piece a, a block that, but I explained that to you and you can hardly see it it's a little bit wonky but it's okay Max, Maxwell came in he said it's fine so it was wonderful my fault but other than that this quilt top came together really nice really pretty there is I keep saying it a uniformity to the 16 fabrics that have been chosen M more pastel more um primary colors if you can notice that it went together beautifully the fabric quality is lovely again i thank the fabric hut for their generosity and a proceeds of this limited edition quilt kit will be going to the hospice promise foundation wonderful wonderful um caregivers in the hospice um industry um so Oh, I thank the Fabric Hut for, again, its generosity for me gifting a, a quilt and them also. So, again, very quick tutorial on how I put this quilt together. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. And again, thumbs up to the Fabric Hut. Look them up. Thank you so much. And thank you, Ricardo. All right, folks. See you later. Bye. This is what comes in the kit. This is the pattern here. The Morning Glory. This is for the throw quilt. You cannot purchase the pattern separately. You must buy the kit. But this was a very, this is very interesting of the uh, fabric cut. Congratulations. You are one of only 1,000 quilters in the world with access to this exclusive quilt kit. As the owner of the Morning Glory Limited Edition Quilt Kit number 206 out of 1,000, you've also supported the Hospice Promise Foundation, helping to bring comfort to those at the end of life's journey as well as their families of course you have the backing and I believe this is the binding is this the binding I'm not quite sure I have to look at it I just pulled everything out these are the squares this um these are the delightful lovely fabrics the floral fabrics in all of the different rainbow t tones here and um, this kit at the end of the day will be put on point which means we're doing row by row on the diagonal which means we will have some bias edges here but again I will show you how I stabilize those bias edges now I'm going to be chain piecing these blocks because again um, it says here make quick work of these units by chain piecing and again it gives a, a QR code um, or you can go to a, um, a website here a demonstration to show how easy it is to chain piece again this is a beginner's kit since all of these are pre-cut the instructions are making block number one and then block number two and as you can see on the pattern itself, it's a very uh, 
regimented, what is the word I want? A very, uh, uh, not symmetrical, not regimented. It's a very same block that we're making two different ones, okay? I hopefully you get that. It's not as scrappy as random as it would be if you're just pulling your scraps. We've had the pre-cut kit. We are making the throw. The, the uh, instructions are quite clear here. There's either the 20 for this throw size that you made blocks, the 36 for the queen, or you'd need to make 42 of each for the king size. It gives you the three um, sizes. But as you can see, hopefully you can see that, I've pulled out for block number one, I have pulled out this lot here. Okay, it shows, let me just show upside down. It shows the yellow, it shows the yellow, the, the peachy color, the blue, and the, the um, reds, as it were. And then I've paired it with these, these the, the oranges, the blues, the pinks, and the yellows. And again, these are a little bit softer than the, the block number two. I've split the uh, six and a half inch squares pretty much in half. And then I'm going to be chain piecing, taking all of my yellows, 20 of them on one side, and then I'll be taking, according to the instructions, 20 of the blue on the other side, like so, like this. And again, you can see how well these are uh, cut. So I'll just chain piece 20 of them along, 20 blue. There, I'm going to start chain piecing my 20 yellow on, on one side as you can see here. And then I will go and I would chain piece the blue. What I'm doing now at my machine, I'm going to be chain piecing my yellow pretty side of the fabric to the white fabric here, which is either side. Um, I'm gonna be doing a quarter of an inch and I'm going to be doing 20, which they have supplied me with 20 of these yellow pieces. So simple, simple, that is the first step here, 20 chain piece. Now that I have my blocks, my 20 yellow, what it tells me to do is now to add the blue for the number one block. So I'm at my ironing board right here. And what I've done is I've bought over my three lots of components for my block number one. I've chain pieced them all. This is how my block is going to end up looking according pretty much to the pattern, which as you can see here, the yellow, the yellow, the peach I deem, the lavender, the pink, the blue, the blue, the pink, and the sort of the peachy color. Okay, that's that. I will be making 20 of these blocks. Now what I've done is I've pressed my fabric to the outside, to the dark on the middle piece here, okay? I've set my seam and then I've pressed these inwards. So how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take one of my units here, I'm going to set my seams. It's very important to do that. Move this over here. Let me see if I'm in the frame, yeah. I'm gonna set my seam like that and then I'm just gonna roll that over neatly, like so, nudging it over with my iron like so, and then I'm going to take my top piece, which is going on the top, as you can see here, and I'm going to set those seams, and then turning it over like so, I'm going to press those seams inward like that. I'm just going to press them in, inside. So when we go to put these on, we are nesting the seams. These are going inside, and those are going out. I take my, my last, my top piece, press that really well, flip it over like so, and then just nudge that up like that. Turn it, nudge that up like that. And then that goes like so, like that. So then when we sew this, 
our seams will nest beautifully. I have 20 of these blocks. They are exactly the same as you can see that. These blocks are exactly the same. You're going to end up with 20 of block number one, which I sort of almost deem as like um, warmer colors as such, sort of, sort of. And the others are quite similar, but they're a little bit more cooler of the, of the colors. Here I am with my 20 block one and 20 block two. Now the instructions, instructions say for my throw size, select eight of block two. Okay, I'm going to pull eight of these. I've already done three of them. Um, make sure each measures 10 and a half inches, which I did. They are beautifully because they're all pre-cut. It's pressed well. As you've seen, I pressed them very well. Set one of those blocks aside. for later. Using a rotary cutter and a long quilting ruler, carefully cut the remaining blocks in half from corner to corner as shown to create two large triangles. Now, I am going to be cutting these in half, but because when I cut them in half, they're going to be on the bias. It says be very careful because these this block will stretch. So what I'm going to do, it's not on the pattern, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take just a pencil and I'm going to make a line from diagonal to diagonal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my machine an extra step to help these from stretching on the bias. I'm going to be sewing a, a, about, about a sixteenth of an inch away from that cut line. That will just, when I go to cut this on the line, that will stabilize my two pieces. Now that I've stabilized with a stay stitching my block number two, I can go back with my ruler and I can cut on the line right there between the stitching. You can't see the stitching. I can. Well now, look at here. <laughs> Up on my design tablecloth, my flannel black tablecloth, I have started to position the rows. Now I have to tell you, it was a little confusing. Not because of the pattern. Pattern's written very well. However, I was getting a little bit confused with the um, corner, the, the side triangles and the top triangles. But once I got it down, Pat, I understand now um, how these are going to go uh, because I'm I'm not dyslexic but I have troubles 
um, with spatial things. <laughs> I think that's the word. Um, sometimes on point confuses me, but they've laid it out very well. And now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to bore you because it's only going to be sewing rows together. Obviously, um, this corner is, this is the first row as it was. Okay. So I have this piece to sew to here and then that seam over there to these. So there'll be three, one, two, three in that row. And the pattern, let me get the pattern. Let me see if you can see this. The pattern shows that very well. I hope that doesn't go blurry. As you can see, this is the pattern for the throw size. And there is semblance of order and uniformity in this quilt, even though it reads scrappy because there are 16 fabrics, sort of light and dark, which again, the um, instructions, let me just show you here. The instructions tell you sort of what fabric is what. So I see sort of block one is lighter, block two are a little bit more primary colors, darker, slightly. I had just a little bit of a difficult time sort of sort of figuring that out. But once I got it, the body of the quilt is working together and as you can see, very uniform. So I see the sort of the reds as the sort of the cornerstones sort of coming together. Do you see that? So I've gotten this far. <laughs> it's a little bit of a mess because I have not ironed anything. I've just sewed the rows, the blocks together. I've not sewn the rows together. Row, f uh, wait a second. The top one is row one, two, row three, row four, row five. That point really gets me. It's It works up so pretty, but it really, really does addle my brain just slightly. But that's what working on point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to finish row six, seven, eight, whatever it is, um, into the corners. Sew my rows together. Matches up beautifully. And um, yeah, then sew my borders on. So I'm sewing my rows together. And what I have done is I'm going over to my ironing board and I'm setting all of my seams and of, of my blocks of of course my rows and my blocks and then my my row and I've I think that I'm on about row four now there's my corner and I'm sewing my rows together it's a little bit funky you have to keep a uh, track my little triangles up in the corner and I start here and I'm telling you once you get the hang of it the as you can see, hopefully you can see, the um, I'm not pinning anything. I've not pinned anything this entire project because the pieces are so well cut. And again, we're sort of working with these long um, on point, it's called rows. But my my seams are nesting because of the way we've pressed them. Can't say how important it is, your ironing, of course. I always say that, either ironing or pressing. And sewing these long rows together just wonderful really really very very nice the way this is constructed see my intersections because of the way it's been pre-cut machine die cut look at that they're perfect and it's, it, it is, as I was saying, a uniform pattern, although it looks scrappy. It really does work up beautiful. So I'm going to finish up now. So I'm on row seven, and I'm over at my um, cutting table here, as you can see. I'm finding it easier to, to um, let me just show you, my, my progress so far. I've sewn together the top half. I'm going to be sewing the bottom half on the one row, but I'm going to be working this way. And I know by now what I'm doing is I need the yellow up here of this block here and the red up here. So what I'm doing is I'm pinning just fairly loosely. And then when I go to my machine, um, I can uh, match it all up nicely but I'm saying so this is one two three one two three and then my next block is my block one and again my yellow is at the top and then my block two which is my next block 
will be the red at the top. So there's less units in this as we go along. So that, now I'm on row seven, so I have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna check, I have one, two, three, four, five. I'm gonna put another yellow at the top. There's one of them, pretty sides together. Once you get into the, the, the um, groove of this, you get it, yellow and then it's a side piece. Row seven, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I have this unit here, which the white goes out to the outside. And as you see, there's my red up here. The body of my quilt is done. I've sewn all the rows together. And right now, it's time to put the borders on. They give you explicit directions how to put the three borders on. There's a, let me just show you, a yellow, a purple, and a white border that goes on. We sew these together and um, follow the instructions on how to put the borders on. But for time's sake, I'm just going to do the borders myself, and then I will show you the finished product, my finished quilt top.